A deployment diagram represents the deployment of runtime artifacts on nodes. So what are nodes? Nodes could be a physical infrastructure like a physical server or a device, virtual virtualized infrastructure like IaaS or PaaS, could be a docker container, it could be a database server, a java, double e web application. Deployment diagram is where we start talking about the hardware and the software at the same time. It's a runtime view of the system. Sometimes in this diagram, you also show protocol, you also show cardinality. So if you think there's a load balancer, put it out there. If you think there's a clustered environment, make sure you add it in the diagram. So as shown in this example, you have a client mobile app, which is running on a node, which in this case is a mobile app, and it makes a service call to a business logic, which is an API application deployed in Apache Tomcat, for example. And this API application interfaces with database for persistent information. Note here we also showing the protocol uh, being used across different layer like HTTPS, JDBC to connect database. The main purpose of deployment diagram is that early on in the project, it helps to validate if the application meets the specified quality attributes. For example, if the requirement says that the application need to be available 24 by 7, that means availability is the key attribute and the deployment diagram helps in validating if the quality attribute is taken into consideration. So either the deployment diagram should have a load balancer or a cluster design as part of the diagram. So let's look at the audiences of this deployment diagram. Obviously architects, it's an important diagram with which architects ensure that quality attributes or NFRs are addressed. If the requirement says that the application need to scale exponentially in next few years, architects need to ensure that it's addressed in the deployment diagram. Developer team needs care as how the application is being deployed in a certain way because it defines how the components is developed. So the developer and team leads are also audience of this deployment diagram. DevOps cares about deployment diagram as they want to know what are the nodes they need to maintain, how they are going to define the process to deploy across these nodes. Are these nodes in cloud? Is this in data center? Is it in hybrid? Production support are definitely interested if something goes wrong in the middle of night, they need to know which server to reboot or how the components need to be redeployed. So they are also again uh, interested in this diagram. And lastly, infra architects and middleware team are the other audience of this diagram and they definitely will have opinion on how the deployment diagram is laid out. So let's say when this uh, deployment diagram is being used. So deployment diagram is quite in handy early on in the project phase to validate the quality attribute. That is if the quality attributes as mentioned in the requirement is being met or not. Has the architecture taken into consideration availability as per the business need or can application scale as per the business need? So this diagram helps to identify that. It's also used to validate business continuity. In the event, if an outage happens, does the business able to continue as the business continuity can be quite different as per the different application. There could be some system that need to be up within few hours, whereas others can afford to be down for a few days. So deployment diagram helps to validate the business continuity of the application. At this point, I would like you to pause the video and draw the deployment diagram of AutoCab self-driving taxi application. When you are done, continue with your video and I'll show you what I came up with. So sharing you a fairly standard deployment diagram template that you see in most of the organization. So you see an external client coming over through an internet and passing through a firewall. Generally, there is a DMZ zone that your networking and security guys have put in 
so that to ensure you don't have a direct access to your backend application server. Then the request is going to pass through an actual internal firewall. Then it will pass through the actual web server database server. So this is one of the way of representation. Let's also look at the other way to depict the deployment diagram. So this is the AutoCAP deployment diagram that I have come up with. Maybe what you have come up with looks like mine or completely different, but that's perfectly okay. So in my example, I have an internal and external client. Let's start from the top. Uh, there's a binary uh, application which is running in a self-drive taxi, which talks to the API application via reverse proxy. And similarly, both the mobile and the web client will communicate to the core application via reverse proxy. You see a load balancer. Uh, we need this to ensure that the AutoCAP application is scalable and is available 24 by 7. Again, to ensure that the application is available, the core application, which is hosted in the server and databases are clustered. So what you see on the screen X2 is nothing but it denotes there is a clustered instances of core application. All communication is authenticated via OpenLDAP, both for internal and external client before consuming the API services. And here the internal client is nothing but admin client and the data analyst. Also, if you see uh, the diagram has protocols, so all the communication from client to service to JSON HTTPS and from application server to uh, databases through JDBC. So it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing to add more information, more details. And uh, if you could not put all the information in one diagram, it's very much okay to uh, break the deployment diagram in two or three diagrams. The main purpose is to add more clarity to the diagram. Thank you.